All right, Saul Bookman, the moment has arised. So when Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis faced off in the ring, you saw who was the first one to blink. All right, Deion Sanders. I like the Deion Sanders hire. I still would like the Deion Sanders hire if I was Colorado. But Deion is having some putts moments here. I do not like, I listen, I understand when you come in and you take over and you got to get rid of some of the, just as what you got too many Mike Luke's on the roster. You got to get more Saul Bokeman's, but the, the way that he is going about things right now, I think is counterproductive to what his, his mission was. He's going after players personally, making fun of their stats on Twitter. I've, I don't know that I've ever seen a head coach do that. His kid is calling them mid left and right. This is the way that if you don't win this year, that, that act kind of starts to wear thin. Dion's got to be careful on this one, Saul. I agree. Um, I, I don't really care about Shadur, you know, going after a player, whatever. I like like players want to go after players all the time. I don't care about that. But as the as the head coach, and this is where I have the major problem with what just happened. As the head coach of a program who preaches uplifting these players and trying to teach them how to be a man and and really get them right for the future, uh, to come out and attack other players or subtweet them or, you know, undercut them um, is just a terrible, terrible look. And it's honestly, it, it, it's, it's a detraction from what Deion Sanders is supposed to be all about. You know, this God fearing man who just wants to um, make a program that he can be proud of and, and really uplift these kids who some of them come from pretty bad um, neighborhoods or backgrounds. And he's trying to make, you know, he's trying to give them a better life. But at the same time, when you have a player coming to your program and then they leave because they don't like, you know, their fit or their feel in the program, you can't just trash them because right. that's not cool either. To me, as a leader and a coach, uh, at any level, you've got to understand it's no different than you getting fired from a job. If you put your shit out there and you vent and you get mad and you, you know, you try to burn bridges, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. Same thing with this. If a recruit is coming into you, they trust you to lead them to the future and you don't do that or some disconnect happened and the player wasn't happy or whatever. I don't care if they were the worst player or the worst attitude in the world. Once they leave, they leave. Right. And if you want to keep in touch with them, keep in touch with them, but don't, don't bury them because they've got a lot of other stuff going on and they're kids, right. they're still kids. They're still learning out life. Right. So why are you going to try and bury somebody and, and, and put your whole mafia, this whole Colorado Buffalo's mafia after a kid because you don't like what they said. That's just, that's trash. Yeah. And I, I, the thing with Cormani McLean, I thought was interesting when he said, well, I have receipts about you essentially that, but the kid took a shot at Dion essentially. So I kind of gave it a pass. This one to me was like, all right, dude, something's got to happen. But here's my question though, Saul, if Mike, if Mike Luke is an idiot, guess what? Saul Bookman brings down the PHNX hat and slaps him around with the hat. Who is the person that in Colorado, because Dion is bigger than Colorado. Dion is bigger than that institution athletically. Is the athletic director going to say, is Rick George going to come to him? Is there anybody that can say, hey, man, we need you to stop this? Because Dion is bigger than Colorado at this point. That's why it's kind of a weird situation. You would think so. You would hope so. But yeah, Dion is bigger. I mean, listen, the, the attendance... Uh, the enrollment has skyrocketed. I mean, he's brought millions to that university because of the notoriety of that program now because of Dion. Like, that's all Dion led, and I'm not right. taking that away. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, like, you, you better be able to to cash some of those checks that you're writing because I right now, Colorado went from, like, this interesting thing, like, I don't know how this is going to work. Is is Dion really going to be the guy that's going to turn this around? And they started off the season 3-0, and and then obviously they fell in their face after that. But that 3-0 and start got everybody's attention right, right. by a mile, right? And so right. you're like, man, is this team going to be bowl eligible after they just had, like, two wins the season before or one win the season before? Now you've kind of – you're starting to shift to being, like, this cool little story to – Oh man, have we been rooting for the bad guys this whole time? If you're the national media, right? Like, right. um, like are these guys like are do they really are they really like this? Is this really how it's going down? Like, that's not cool. And now you're gonna become public enemy number one, and you're gonna get everybody's best shot because they're gonna want to put you in your place. You better be careful what you wish for. And it, you know that, and you know this if you win. People are cool with it. Guess what? If Michael Jordan was a 12th man on an NBA team, none of that crap's flying. 
But when you're the GOAT, when you're winning, you can get away with it. I will tell you this, Saul Bookman, that Colorado's over-under in Las Vegas on the BetMGM Sportsbook app is only four and a half, my friend.